Hey, what's going on guys? John the Video Guy here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about bitrate. What is it and what do you need to know as a video editor to understand bitrate, how it works, and how you can export video files correctly for whatever you're gonna use them for, whether they're being streamed, stored, or sent to the client some way. Understanding bitrate and how it's gonna be played back is a critical step of the post-production process. So hopefully I answer some of your questions that you may be wondering about bitrate. But before we begin, can you please hit the like button? It really helps my channel out. And for your appreciation, here is a picture of an elephant. Very nice. So what is bitrate? Bitrate you can kind of think of is like the speed of which video is uh, encoded. So it's the rate that um, video is transmitted from the input to the output. I would say the best like example of this, if you can kind of compare video bitrate to like internet speed is probably the best comparison. You know, you know, the more internet speed you have, the more content you can consume, download and upload. So bitrate is kind of like the same way where if you pack the video with a lot of bits, basically, uh, it's higher quality and you're getting more basically in the video. So a higher bit rate is basically containing a lot more information and it's more difficult to transmit. So if you think of the internet example, you know, if you have a video with a lot of uh, high bit rate, you'll need a high speed connection to stream it or to view it. So basically bit rate is the amount of information that's being transmitted in the video that the video contains that it's going out, being streamed, or being played somewhere. So you might be wondering like, well, if it's the quality that it impacts the most, then what's the pros and cons? So, you know, obviously if you have a video and it has a high bit rate, it's gonna be very high quality. There's gonna be a lot of information and data in that video file, but there are some drawbacks and it doesn't work for every situation. When it comes down to bitrate, you really have to understand the bandwidth of the consumer. So going back to the internet example, if you make a video with a bitrate of 20 megabytes per second and you send it to the client, but their internet download speed is only 10 megabytes per second, then you can see that they're gonna have issues trying to download or watch that video in real time. They're gonna experience buffer issues and it's just not gonna be a nice experience. But on the same token, as a video editor, you want to provide a nice final output for your customer. So how can we combat this? Next, I want to talk about variable bitrate versus constant bitrate. And this is how we can create custom solutions for our customers. First, I'm going to talk about custom bitrate. <laughs> custom. I guess it is kind of custom, but it's called constant bitrate because you can make it whatever bitrate you want it to be, but it's consistent for the whole video. So going back to our example of the internet, the person that only has 10 megabyte download speeds, you can make a bitrate uh, 10 megabytes per second, give it to them, and it'll be playing back consistently at 10 megabytes per second. This is very popular in encoding for live streaming, for broadcast television, and as well as live streaming. Broadcast studios use this all the time, like through the news and TV, because it's a constant stream and they can rely on it because it doesn't change over time or depending on the type of video content. It's very consistent and mainstream. The other benefit about constant bitrate is that you have a good idea of what the final file size will be. And you also have a baseline on the quality as well. You know, you know, at its best point, what it's going to be. It's never gonna change. It's never gonna dip or look better at certain times. It's gonna be very consistent. So that's constant bitrate in a nutshell. So what's variable bitrate as opposed to constant bitrate? Well, variable is what it sounds like where it varies from moment to moment. So it usually has a cap or some type of variable where it will be from zero to maybe 50 megabytes per second. And it will hover and how it's encoded uh, during the rendering process, it will analyze the footage and remove information that it doesn't need at certain times and it will add in information for more complex scenes. So during a very dynamic scene with a lot going on, it's gonna use a lot more megabytes per second or the bitrate will be a lot higher. But say if it's a very constant boring scene where there's not a lot of motion happening, maybe there's a lot of monotone or very plain looking footage and different elements in the scene, 
it can duplicate a lot of the same information and remove a lot of data from the video file. So the bit rate for those moments are gonna be a lot lower. Next, I wanna talk about transcoding. This is primarily what VBR or variable bit rate is often used for. Now, transcoding can kind of be confused with encoding, but what the difference is, is transcoding is making basically multiple streams of the same video file. So you can kind of think of YouTube for an example. Um, when you're watching even this video, you can look down in the bottom right and you notice there's a few different options on how to view the video. You can view it in 1080p, 720p, 480p, and the different resolutions not only change, but as well as the bit rate. Because if you downgrade the video, the bit rate actually also changes. This is similar also to Vimeo or even other popular subscriptions such as Hulu and Netflix. They have different options that you can view videos depending on your internet download speed. Everyone has a different option depending on how well their internet and their connection is. So variable bitrate provides the best quality, but it can be transcoded to different viewers. That's why most of the time, if you make a video for YouTube, you wanna use VBR or variable bitrate. That way you upload the best quality that the video can be, and then based on the viewer's preferences and their own network settings, they can choose whichever format or stream that is possible for them. But at the end of the day, you still upload and provide the highest quality that the video can be. Where in CBR, you can't really uh, transcode it because it's always it's already at a constant bitrate. It doesn't have that um, buffer where it will degrade and get better and it kind of goes back and forth a little bit. It's just constant. So that's the difference between CBR and VBR in a nutshell. Now I want to show you in Premiere Pro how you can set that up and adjust the settings for how to export a video using one or the other. So I have a Premiere Pro timeline. I'm just going to go to the export. I'm hitting Command M and you'll notice your format preset if you scroll down here, you're, this is probably where you saw this first, is under bitrate settings, there's encoding, VBR, one pass, VBR, two pass. Basically the difference between one pass and two passes, it does two passes. Uh, it basically scans the video twice or once, you know, determining what data can be uh, included and not included. So for example, if we turn this to CBR, you'll notice the target bitrate and you can just set it to 10, 20, 30, however many bit rates, or sorry, megabits per second that you want the video to be consistently. So you can change this, you know, with the slider up and down. So this is very helpful if you need it to be 20, or you need it to be five, you can set it accordingly. And then for VBR, usually you want two pass works good. Uh, there's the target and maximum. So this is important. So the target is where it should be most of the time, but say the maximum you can set and it will kind of be in between the target and the maximum. So you can kind of think of these two sliders as ranges. So for example, you can set the target to be maybe 10, but you don't want it to uh, go past 20. So that's how you adjust the settings inside Premiere Pro. So I hope this has explained bitrate a little bit more if you're looking to learn a little bit more about it. Feel free to do a lot of research on your own. There's probably a lot of information I didn't cover about bitrate. So feel free to take the knowledge from this video and add it to your own projects and to build your own expertise. I hope you found this video helpful. Please uh, like and subscribe if you like these videos and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.